in Bali when uh, I go I went there with my student to work in the green school uh, on the bamboo and uh, I uh, see Andy and uh, Donny is very, are very kind so uh, I asked them to go to bamboo village to make a deal for me Green Camp Bali at the green school 2014 and that's where we met Mi Han. Mi Han invited us to come to Vietnam and to the um, Huan Bamboo Village and, uh, and Donnie said well if I'm invited to come I'll knock you up a bamboo year. And what I really loved about Mi Han is because they were using bamboo to help the people raise their living standards. She found out I built yurts she invited me to come and build a yurt. Yep. Yep. And here we are. Here we are. I asked Andy, Tony, uh, come to help me make the joke where the children will stay for learning. And uh, if we can show with the bamboo, uh, we can make the joke, we can make the house. You see, I'm making the house with the bamboo. And uh, from there, I hope the children will open the eyes and they have a new idea. Yeah, I think so. Nó cũng là tre đấy. Nhưng mà mình thấy nó khác biệt cái chỗ nào? Cái lá của nó. I started like as a bit of a chippy, you know, the old chisel and saws and stuff like that. And when I was introduced to bamboo as a building material, that was it. I was hooked. When did that happen? Uh, back in 1899. No, it was actually 1989. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Yes. Very nice. What do you call this? Tamvong, here. Hmm. Tirsostakis. Yes. Tirsostakis siniasis. 
I have to write that down. Yeah, this is nice. Nice, solid, beautiful. I'm all cleaned up, ready to go. But yeah, okay, so you have a lot of different things about bamboo that makes it, for me, attractive to work with. Uh, lightweight, uh, the, the rate at which it reproduces, grows, sustainability, yep. attractiveness, natural material. Mm -hmm. um, for me as a bamboo farmer, I, 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 get a, um, I get a sustainable crop. I don't have to go around killing anything to make a quid. I don't have to go poison and stuff. I don't have to plough up any ground. I don't even have to own a tractor. I like working in the shade. I like work, being able to work upright. Basically, I'm, I'm in the office. But look at this. Have a go at this. This is amazing. Look, it's a beautiful bamboo in my mind. Because this is the size of the bamboo I use a lot for my demountable yurts. It has a thick wall. So this is fairly fairly high, way, high up the stick, the pole, but it's still quite a thick wall. And if you look at the bottom, I don't know if you get much thicker than that. <laughs> it's a tiny little hole. Massive strength. But the main feature I'm looking for in bamboos is the thicker wall to reduce the possibility of splitting. It'll be interesting to see how the bamboo goes in this project. Uh, but we use a lot of bamboos, as you will see later on. So the yeah, odd split here and there will not be a problem because there'll be so much strength. I like that, Jackie. Perfect. Yes. We're now in Ho Chi Minh City. We've come to the market to look for some geofabric and other materials for the roof of the yurt. I think this could work. Be lucky probably to find anything closer. Oh, we're in this amazing market, just jam packed full of things that we don't need, but we're looking for brooms and bins for the render, applying the render mix onto the roof of the yurt. That's another point too, I feel about the bamboo. Look at your tools. When I run a workshop, I have my rasp, yeah. my saw, mm -hmm. and my machete. Three tools. Harvest, yep. don't need a chainsaw, don't need a bulldozer, don't need a timber jinker. Yep. Uh, cutting and shaping, don't need a sawmill, yep. don't need any planers. Yep. I mean, how many tools do you think they've used yeah, sure, cordless drill. Bloody good thing. 
but essentially you can build whatever you need to with bamboo with three tools. Simple tools. Rasp, saw, machete. And they've been doing that in Asia, in, or Asia, South America, Africa, centuries. I suspect, yeah, with even just one tool. <laughs> yeah, machete. Just a machete. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. possibly going to achieve this. Somehow, but you don't give up, that's for sure. And if you have to work late and light and bugs and sweat, yeah, you work late and light and bugs and sweat. Maybe that's dry now. Just hopefully ordered for the new stirrups to be made up. So I've drawn up a design for the guys, and um, of course there's no language, but a uh, picture paints a thousand words, as they say. So we'll see how we go. Y'all getting enough digging shots there now? <laughs> this is some fine dirt, darling. Cut in like this, the saw can jump slash your hand up. Right. Always have your thumb up. Oh. It can save blood. I like that. <laughs> I like my blood. Okay. Yep, my knees bamboo saw. Not, not bad, not bad. Jig, the wolf 
sections for the yurt. So we can make the six all the same, just use the jeep six times. The joinery system we will be using for building the yurt is basically traditional peg and bind. Uh, we're going to modernise that. Our pegs will be made of steel uh, metal cutting screws. Because they don't split the bamboo, they cut holes they go in. So they locate the bamboo so it can't slide around. But they don't give it any strength. So then we put the bind, the nylon, and we're using modern 100 pound or whatever fishing line here to do the bind, whereas traditionally you'd use vines or bamboo rope or banana or coconut, whatever you've made. Fencing wire, yeah, piano wire. Binding is the only place where we want to have tension in our life. <laughs> you gotta keep the tension going. First layer of shake off skin on, which protects the uh, black plastic. Which is the next layer, and we're going to cut the cut that next and put that on. is ready but gluing the fabric on you've got to wait for the uh, contact put it on wait then put on more then wait and then press it together and we're running out of daylight so I'm gonna to have to finish it under lights oh, how am I feeling <laughs> Feeling sticky. Which part of me enjoys the drama? I'd say there's a number of parts. One part would be the element of you know, always there's a, a part of you that wants to be the hero, you know, <laughs> the star of the show, whatever. There's definitely that. Um, 
Another part is the part of me who, well, I actually can do this, you know, I can achieve, I can persevere. No. We will need more. We're just waiting for two more guys to come and we're going to do the lift and see how it goes. Okay, Mihan. Reflecting on the yurt here and the build that we've done here. Yeah, it's been great. It's there's been some stress and tensions, but you know, I'm a bit like that, but we got the job done. Okay. <laughs> we got half the rendering done. The important thing to me was to show the guys how to do that and the right sort of mix for the rendering. I wasn't quite sure about the, this geofabric. I've never worked with this thick, dense kind of geofabric before. So I made a kind of a runny mix, but it went really well. A golden roof. <laughs> it looks great. Emotionally. Today it was very emotional for me when after we did the lift and I think it's a bit like all the stress of the two weeks you keep it together you keep it together and then it becomes a special moment when you just can't keep it together anymore so there was a bit of that at that point there were things I would be reflecting on after today and processing through my mind, working on. But wow, it's just been great to be here. to Mihan and Jackie. Their hospitality has been incredible. And thank you Mihan for inviting me to come and do this job. <laughs> there it goes again. <laughs> That's when it comes out. Hey. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh, oh. I know I've got the mark numbers on him. Oh, no. 
Thank you, Mian. Thank you, Stephen.